Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're gonna to talk about EPOC, or Excess Post-Exercise Oxygen Consumption. This is the afterburn effect of calories that we're burning after a high intensity workout. So we're actually gonna put numbers to this and find out actually how many calories are we burning after a workout's over. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so you may have seen a graph like this that shows this giant line and this big orange zone of calories that we're burning after workouts done. And you might have heard the marketing claims of burn calories while you sleep and burn calories for the next 24 or 36 hours after a workout. But this is actually a really misleading graph. This is more of what the science is actually showing us. So what we can see here is a graph of oxygen consumption over time. So as we're working out, this line kind of represents our intensity here as we're working out. So to lay the groundwork, oxygen consumption is directly related to heart rate. So a higher heart rate means we're burning more calories all the time. If you're running at 140 beats per minute, you're burning more calories than 130 beats per minute. And we can quantify that. One number that we know from research is that we burn roughly five calories per liter of oxygen we consume. And that research is really what allows us to make these graphs and determine how many calories we're burning in a workout. So you can see here a typical 45 minute workout with some high intensity intervals here. So this early portion of the graph is where we're accumulating what we call oxygen deficit. So this green portion here is oxygen deficit, meaning we started the workout and our oxygen consumption slowly started to increase, but it didn't meet the immediate demand. So this always happens right as we're about to start working out. We actually usually feel pretty good in this phase of the workout. Like you can run really fast and conquer anything, but usually whenever it catches up to you about here is where you start to breathe really heavy. And that's the point up, up around here where your oxygen consumption caught up with the oxygen demand of the exercise you're doing. Okay, so then as you're going through the workout, you're gonna have some high intensity bursts. Maybe these are treadmill sprints or bike sprints or rower sprints or something high intensity here. And we're going to put more of an oxygen demand on the body than the body can handle. If we're doing these really high intensity bouts, we can actually go over our maximum oxygen consumption and we accumulate oxygen deficit. So we can see the oxygen deficit from the initial portion of the workout represented here and the oxygen consumption from the high intensity efforts represented here. Now the blue is where we actually represent the calories burned during the workout. So this is the calories you actually burned as you were breathing hard and sweating and your body was able to keep up with. And now finally, this is the EPOC, the excess post-exercise oxygen consumption in red. This is the afterburn that everyone gets excited about. But when we actually quantify this with science, we can see that the calorie burn from the actual workout was around 540 calories for a 45 minute high intensity workout for an average person burning about 12 calories per minute, which is pretty standard. So research is showing us that this afterburn effect is roughly six to up to 15% of the amount that we burned during the workout, additionally burned after the workout. Meaning that if we burn 540 calories during the workout, we can expect to burn an additional 30 to 70 calories in that 24 hour period after the workout as our metabolism comes back down to a resting level. So the claims that you're hearing about the afterburn effect being larger than the workout itself are very untrue and that's actually really a misleading claim. Most of the calories that you're burning from a high intensity workout are actually burned during the workout. If you appreciate hearing the actual numbers for the afterburn effect, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. One claim that actually is true is that the afterburn effect is about twice as large from a high intensity effort as it is from a steady state workout. So if you just go and jog on a treadmill for a few miles, you would expect about a 5% afterburn effect. So if you did a 500 calorie workout at steady state without those high intensity efforts, you may only burn about 25 calories after that workout. Whereas with a high intensity workout, you're burning up to say 70 calories after the workout but we're still talking about very small numbers here. The difference between 25 calories after the workout or 70 calories after the workout really isn't gonna make that much of a difference. Okay, so to sum up, these green efforts here are anaerobic bouts of activity and because the workout was high intensity, we use the anaerobic systems. That meant that our oxygen demand of the exercise exceeded the oxygen consumption that we could actually perform. 
So we went anaerobic and we accumulated oxygen deficit. So that was the green. And then we repaid that after the workout as oxygen debt, which is the same thing as EPOC or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for understanding the EPOC effect. If it was, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to learn more, make sure to subscribe. If you want to learn more about exercise science and strength conditioning, go ahead and join the strength conditioning study group on Facebook. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.